And on January the 11th, 2019, the notice of this meeting of the Upper Township Committee was posted on the official Township Bulletin Board, mailed to the Cape May County Gazette, the Atlantic City Press, the Ocean City Sentinel, Ledger, the Herald Times, and filed with the Clerk's Office. Tonight's meeting is being video recorded up until the closed session portion of this meeting and will be available on UTTV channel 97 and on the Upper Township website. I hereby direct that this announcement be made a part of the minutes of this meeting. I mean, that's all rise to the new flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, I will call all of these. Mr. Barr? Here. Mr. Coggins? Here. Mr. Corson? Present. Mr. Young? Here. And Mayor Columbia? Here. All members are present. All right, would someone like to make a motion to approve the minutes from December 17th, regular and closed session, as well as the January 4th reorganization minutes? Motion to approve. Second. All the roll, please. Mr. Barr? Yes. yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Colombo? Yes. Motion is carried. All in favor? All right, we'll spend some time uh, with. Do you have anything for us this evening, Scott? Uh, Mayor, I don't have anything in reports. I do have some comments in uh, new business um, and, uh, and also in the, the season. Okay. Barbara? Nothing in report this evening, sir. Thank you. Nothing at this time. We just have some matters for closed session. Barbara? Nothing this evening either. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Um, Committeeman Coggins. Well, first of all, I'd like to uh, congratulate the uh, new president of the Upper Township Business Association, who appears to be joining us tonight, Mr. Jack Griffin. Uh, congratulations, Jack. It was a, a very good choice on their part. Uh, also, in regard to the upcoming uh, budget workshops, uh, the Township Committee members will have in their hands uh, by our next meeting at the 28th a copy of the proposed budget as well as a variance report and an agenda for the workshops. Budget workshops will be planned for February 11th and February 25th at 6 o'clock prior to uh, our meetings. The introduction of the budget will be planned for our, our March 11th meeting, and uh, the plan would be to adopt the budget on the 8th of April. And that was all I had to see. Okay, thank you. Nothing, Committeeman Young. <laughs> Let the record reflect. We didn't have a holiday, so we're good. Call me off guard. I'm not paranoid. <laughs> Kudos to <laughs> our uh, public works employees for their quick, quick action with our uh, snow event that we had. Uh, and also, I uh, would like to make a motion uh, that we prepare resolutions for years of service for two long-time employees, Christopher Thomas and Dwayne Twiller, excuse me, uh, for their years of service. Okay. Second. Okay, Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. yes. Motion is carried. That's all I have. Thank you. Committeeman Corson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we do have our upper township free animal rabies clinic. Um, That'll be held Saturday, February 19th, and also again Saturday, February 16th, at Shore Veterinary Animal Hospital on the corner of uh, Hope Corson Road in Seville. As you can also get your rabies clinic, you can get the rabies shot, and you can also get your dog license. Um, as of today, this year, we've licensed 240 dogs so far, so we're off and running with the dog licenses, and uh, hopefully, it'll be a good. Rabies clinic. Okay. And I have nothing this evening, so we can move on. Okay. Moving on. Item number one. Honoring Harrison Hep 
requesting on attaining the designation of Eagle Scout. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Palumbo? Yes. yes. Motion is carried. Item number two, affirming the Township of Upper Civil Rights Policy with respect to all officials, appointees, employees, prospective employees, volunteers, independent contractors, and members of the public that come into contact with municipal employees, officials, and volunteers. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? <coughs> Mayor Palumbo? Yes. yes. Carry. Three, accepting the surety bond from George Harms Construction Company for the mining operation known as Caldwell Pit for blocks 414, 451, lots 45 and 4, and authorizing the release of the existing surety. Motion to accept. Second. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. yes. Motion is carried. Item number four, appointing John Principe, Sean Fenton, Daniel Matthey, Marshall Kohler, and Evan Sheridan as full-time employees to the Upper Township Public Works Department. I, I'm going to ask that, <coughs> excuse me, after this question with uh, our business administrator that we table this and need a little further review to make sure that everything is, uh, 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 everything that's required has been addressed. So I would ask you to table it for the till the next meeting. Need a motion? motion? Yes. Motion, motion to table. table. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. yes. Motion is carried to table this resolution to the next meeting. Item number five, appointing Jonathan Carter, Cassandra Ros Rosamond, Robert Palmero Jr. and H. Lawrence Dubs Jr. as part-time employees to the Upper Township Division of Emergency Medical Services. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Ms. Carey? Six, appointing William C. Hanley as the Upper Township Representative and Steve C. Eisenhower as the alternative Upper Township Representative to the Great Egg Harbor National Scenic and Recreation River, River Council. Move the resolution. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Forsen? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. yes. Mr. Tony? Item number seven, authorizing a one-year extension to the contract with Dan Ziegler and Mark Hoff, LLP, for actuarial services. Motion to authorize. Second. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. yes. Mr. Carey? Item number eight, tax refund for block 688, lot two. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number nine, authorizing the purchase of a case 521G Z-Bar T4F wheel loader and accessories in the amount of 149995 through Sourcewell, formerly NJPA, National Cooperative Contact with funds from the 2018 Capital Improvement Bond Ordinance. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number 10, 2019 Temporary Budget Debt Service. Motion to authorize. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. yes. Ms. Carey. Item number 11, under new business, B and K Enterprises request to hold a spring in Tuckahoe craft show on April 6, 2019 at the Upper Township Community Center. And if this is approved, then we'll bring it back at uh, the next meeting with a resolution. Or well, we did met all the criteria yes. and, yes, and we're good with basketball and everything yes. for that day. Yep. Uh, motion to approve. Second. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Plumba? Yes. Motion is carried. 
12, Ocean City Crew Boosters, request to hold a raffle, number 510, a Seville Tavern in Upper Township on Thursdays beginning March 21st, 2019 through May 9th of 2019. Move we grant the request. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. yes. Mr. Goggin? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. yes. Carried. Item number 12, the Zoning Board 2018 year-end review. Um, our engineer's not here, uh, so I'll briefly comment on this. Uh, each year under the statute, the Zoning Board is supposed to give a statement as to what type of applications it had in the prior year and then also any recommendations for changing uh, the ordinance. Um, there are a couple of minor represent, uh, recommendations. Uh, one of them, I'm not sure uh, the board uh, is aware that there is actually some language that seems to address, uh, 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 and when I say the board, I mean the zoning board was aware that there's actually language in a footnote on our fees that addresses that third recommendation, which is that uh, the board be authorized to hire experts in particular applications that they feel they need uh, uh, additional experts for, such as planners or, um, uh, for example, the, exam uh, the example they use was a cell tower. Um, uh, we actually have that language already. Uh, I spoke to the um, uh, solicitor for the zoning board, the planning board, and uh, asked him to review it as if it needs a modifying uh, and asked to let me know, and I'll bring it to you folks for review and or proposed amendment to the ordinance. The other items are rather minor. We can pick them up uh, if the next time we do a land use ordinance change. Uh, I look at the other one I, I had an issue with was the uh, setbacks for pools, moving it to 15 feet. I think it's already regulated under local code. Well, you're going to put a lot of people out of, oh, I know. of compliance. Put a lot of variance applications. Um, and, and that was something that I was going to bring up, but I think it's something the planning board should look at and maybe uh, talk about it before it gets to the township committee. Uh, I hope we were old enough to remember why that's five feet as opposed to 15, because mm -hmm. of the reason that you actually mentioned. We had a slew of uh, people trying to put pools in on existing permitted undersized lots and uh, you know the, there's just not enough room for 15 feet and they had testimony and expert testimony that yeah it, it's not dangerous. Some towns actually had allowed them to be cantilevered over the existing buildings. Um, uh, I'm not sure if there's a deck above it whether that's a good idea but if there's no decks it's allowed so um, I'm not sure where the safety concerns come from. The only way I didn't consider for myself is if we did a sliding scale like we do all accessory buildings. So an undersized lot would come down to five feet, and a full size lot would be 15. But I mean, it's going to create so many barriers, it's ridiculous. Especially since we have so many existing permitted oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, undersized lots, uh, that uh, the density on the, on the lots is pretty strong. If you, all you have to do is look at the memorial section uh, right behind Ocean City Home, and all those lots are really packed and tight. And any of those people trying to put in a pool would obviously be required to come to the zoning board. Mm -hmm. um, it, it makes sense on a large lot, but it doesn't make sense on the smaller lots. And I'm not sure it, you need some of you by professional. It meets the VOCA code for wall support for your foundations and everything else if it's not competing. You know, any of those issues. Right. And I, and I can tell you on the island, because they have small lots, yeah. it's routine to put in these <coughs> mini pools that clearly are within a few feet of that structure. Some of them are currently around under, actually. Um, All right. Just, I was doing when I had a concern about it, so I wouldn't throw it out there now. But I think something the planning board should pick up. Maybe next meeting you can talk about it. Okay. That's it. No action required at this time. Do we need to make a motion to accept that report? Sure. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. And, and, and that, just for edification, that report should be sent to the planning board for review and comment. Yes. Yeah. Item number 14, Alexander Grossi requests for a street light at Mariner's Cove and Summers Avenue. Mr. Morgan has some comments. Uh, you know, normally we would ask the engineer to take a look at it. He wasn't here. Um, I asked Scott to look at it. I looked at it. It really does need a light. It's a very dark corner. Um, and the concern is, uh, you know, in the morning when, when it's dark with the kids with the, um, the buses that you know, it's a safety, you know, hazard and needs to be addressed. I mean, I, I think it's, it's very 
you know, prudent to put one there at this point. Um, and the one like if you went to the end of the cold Saturday to see that there is a canopy, true canopy that uh, basically obscures that light to a certain extent, so that's part of, I think, the issue. Uh, both lights are working there, Colsac and uh, Adam Summers and Mariner. Um, however, if you look at the other Colsacs that are in that area, close to them have two lights. So that may be uh, something that we I mean, should we wait for our engineer to look at it, or is it? Is it I mean, it's up to you. I, I do think there's a need, and, you know, I, I, I just don't want it to go too long. We, we have been, you know, informed about the situation, that, you know, when it's dark now, and we, it could potentially prolong it a month, another month. Is that a motion? Perhaps what I'd suggest. I'm going to make the motion to approve it. Okay, because I was going to say you could also make a motion to approve it, and if it gets passed, or the motion includes the fact that the engineer can review it if he has any concerns and bring it back to the board, to the township committee. I will Sorry. second the motion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Thornwell? Yes. Not easier. <laughs> <laughs> no, <coughs> payment of bill. All right, but someone like the I hereby motion. move that all claims submitted for payment at this meeting be approved and incorporated in full in the minutes of this meeting. Right. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Falgan? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Plumbo? Yes. There are a number of reports from municipal departments. From the clerk's office, construction code, division of EMS, finance office, tax collector, municipal court, MUA report, Department of Public Works. Um, these will all be available upon request tomorrow with the clerk's office. I'll make a motion to accept these reports. Mr. Yes. Mr. Falgan? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. yes. At this time, we've reached the public comment portion of the meeting. If someone would like to address the Township Committee, now is the time to do it. Please come up to the podium, state your name and your reason for addressing the Township Committee. Wanda Adamson, Sunset Acres, um, South Sunset Drive. Um, I was just curious as to what's happening with Caldwell Park. Um, there were supposed to be improvements, and some were started, and now that football is over and I'm not there much, um, I was just curious as to um, what additions or changes or what, what's going to be happening. We're going to work right now. We, we removed the entire Babe Ruth field, and that will be regressed. The lights will stay, but the dugouts, backstops, everything's gone. That'll become practice facility uh, for the football program and the other programs there. And we also removed most of the uh, uh, apparatus at the playground and installed new swings as well as new mulch, uh, new fencing, and opened it up and removed more trees to uh, get that a little better ventilation and, and appearance. So that's basically what we're doing at Cogwell for right now. Is there any... Um Plans for additional parking. Uh, we are looking. Uh, I, I was looking at the blacktop where the hockey used to be. That's, we've, we've been discussing that uh, as far as to make that more parking uh, you know, for, the, for game games. Yeah. Uh, there's a good chance that's going to happen. Uh, we're just looking. We also we need some spots for pickleball and different things, so we're trying to balance. Uh, but that is one of our considerations to, to turn that area into parking. Uh, the other question I had was, um, I saw on the, the uh, state's highway list that next Tuesday, the 22nd, they're supposed to be here uh, for anybody who wants to come between, I think it's like 4 and 8, to see the plans for the Route 50 bridge replacement. And I was wondering if that could be put on the township's web calendar to maybe anybody see it because I only saw it because I was going to look at road conditions for my parents to go out this morning. I think it is. Yeah. Is it already on your Scott? Yeah, I believe it is. It is? Yeah. Because it's not on like the calendar, the main I looked this morning, I didn't see it. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah this is the second meeting. Um, they had a, a, a meeting about six weeks ago, same purpose, and, expo and an explanation as to you know what their plans are with uh, redoing that bridge, and then also they're extending each, each side so it's more balanced. <coughs> You take, take into consideration flood elevations and those kind right. of things. So it's it's probably worth you know if you're interested, it's certainly worthwhile to go and, and see what they have planned. Did any of the committee by any chance get over to Summers Point last week to see the bike plans for uh, the addition to the parkway? I wanted to, but missed it. But I did notice reading their script, they did not have a map uh, or drawing for you to look at, but um, they. Revision, 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 construction to start 2022. So as far as that being open to the public, we're years away yet. That uh, one way. Route 50 project is going to be a couple year project. Also. It's be, okay. And it's going to be horrible because they're going to send them down Old Tucker Road to Tyler Road. And they're actually going to put a light there. That's a godsend because when I like there, somebody's going to get seriously hurt. And. In the whole process, it actually, we should actually do something to get ask the county to look at Old Tucker Road in general because there's been a horrible amount of accidents here in the last year. At the last meeting, the county engineer was there and he was asking a number of questions as well. Um, but part of the problem is, is they are going to detour people to use the Tyler Road, and you know we have some, we have concerns personally that uh, you know there could be some you know speedy traffic trying to get around because of the detour and everything else. So. There are steps being taken to try and offset that, that situation as well. I mean, summertime is going to be horrible. It's already horrible. It's going to get worse. Uh, one other question. The new lights that are in downtown Tuckahoe, a part of the redo of the bridge and all, are they state-owned or township-owned or... Because I know from the electric company that the regular street pole lights go out, you pay a per fee. Um, but if you is, if you want lights put in as far as the township goes on their property and you want to buy them and have them as yours, you're responsible for maintenance. They were put in, I, I, I think the state paid the cost to them on the upgrade. The township is actually responsible for the fee payment on that. So the reason I ask is there's one right at the intersection of Schoolhouse and where Pete's Pizza, uh, not Pete's Pizza, but where the Pizza Place used to be, it's now the Antique Store. There's a new light there, and I keep trying on the Atlantic City app to get it repaired, and they're reporting there's no light there. So I'm like, wait a minute, there's a light there. <laughs> but um, I haven't stopped and looked searched for a poll number. Is the poll out? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, what happens is our, our restaurant, our personnel actually patrol the township and, and report out lights. We'll put that on the list and we'll get it turned in and get it taken care of. Yeah, because they've been working 50 pretty good. Uh, the, one day last week, I counted 12 lights out between the bank, Sturdy Bank in Tuckahoe, and the traffic light at Lavari's. It's down to six now, so, we, so they're we working pay, on it. We pay the same amount whether they're on or not. Right, we that's what I'm saying. If you're still paying, you might as well have them working. Yes, yes. yes. thank you. Would anyone else like to address the Township Committee? Hi, I'm Ralph Cooper, uh, Gladwin Drive in Chadwin. I just wanted to speak as a member of the green team. Um, we got the township certified again this year, so this is the third year that the township of Upper has been certified with Sustainable Jersey. And uh, I really appreciate the effort that the township is doing to do things that are sustainable. Uh, there is a a program that you're all aware of with 150 different actions and each year we've tried to work with different ones and uh, throughout the state there's now 440 communities that are in the green team program the sustainable jersey um, so we're going to try this year to get it up leveled a bit more to uh, have some more community involvement but as uh, Committeeman Hobie keeps talking about, we would like to encourage new members to get involved with the Green Team and the committees that are in the Green Team here in Upper Township. 
Uh, we meet usually every uh, month. Uh, this month we're meeting on the 22nd of uh, January at 3 o'clock in the afternoon here at Township Hall. Um, I also wanted to speak just as myself and not a member of the Green Team and not not a member of the Business Association or the Historical Society, but in traveling during the holiday season, I've noticed that around us, pretty much every community in every direction has uh, Christmas uh, decorations in their downtown areas. Uh, sometimes it's a small village, sometimes it's a larger town, but Upper Township doesn't seem to have any um, holiday decorations at all on the poles, and uh, I think it's something that might be an opportunity to involve the business community and maybe some of the civic groups to uh, partner with the Township of Upper and look at this coming year to have some decorations. We uh, actually, years ago when they had the Christmas parade in Taco, there were some decorations in Old London, mm -hmm. but it's been 15 years since there's been a Christmas parade in Taco. And that was kind of through the top of March, I believe. It's, it's been a while, and I think, uh, you know, the folks in the township that travel and see what other towns are doing, sometimes when they come back, they maybe not have an opportunity or time to talk about it, but I think it's something with a 12-month a lead time we could look at. When I was down in Dennis Township and Woodbine and, and further down county, they all seem to have these. I know it's a process you go through with the utilities to get the permission to put them on the poles, but as Wanda just talked about those new light poles in Tuckahoe, it would be perfect to have uh, some decorations on those poles out there. So, just wanted to share that with you, and I'd be happy to... As your uh, volunteers go, you may, you may get a better shot at some volunteers for the Green Team if you moved your meetings to an evening. Uh, I think if you have your evenings at 3 o'clock, or your meetings at 3 o'clock on a, on a weekday, you're, you're pretty much eliminating anybody who's working a, a conventional job. I appreciate that. We've, um, over the years, we've we've dealt with that. We've had meetings. We have what we call work sessions. Uh, last year, for a couple of months, we did them on Thursday evenings at the library. Um, it wasn't exactly a big rush of people turning out. We meet during the day primarily so we can engage the township officials and and meet with Hobie and meet with uh, Paul Dietrich and so forth when they're here. Um, We've also reached out and meet with other groups. I've been to the Rotary Club and different community groups where we can try to get volunteers that way. So I think it's just a constant process of making people aware of it because I've been volunteering and the mayor's been graciously appointing me now for four years, maybe five. And uh, I still find people in the township that don't know anything about the green team at all. So uh, we're going to do a better effort this year to try to publicize what we're doing more and publicize the opportunities. Um, last fall, you saw we did posted on the, on the website the date of the. I, I think what we could do is give the green team a little PR by putting that you know looking for some new volunteers for for some new committees and uh, maybe you know, that might help as well. There's a link on the website for the Green Team. I appreciate that. We have a page on the website that talks about the Green Team and so forth, and it's searchable, but having it as a part of the calendar would be helpful, too. Okay. It's ironic. Uh, we just had that discussion about trying to find some town area and what we do have available to put decorations up and have a little more of a festive appearance. Uh, Tucker always, always had it growing up as a kid. Uh, every every telephone pole was decorated, and uh, the whole town was pretty well lit up. And hopefully, we'll get some more rejuvenation in that Tuckahoe area, where we'll be able to have something like that. It's really about the only area we have. That's but but I think I think town. I think I look at it a little differently. I look at it that we could do it at the entrances of the township. So we could do it at Tuckahoe as an entrance from 49, and we could do it on Roosevelt Boulevard as an entrance into the, the main part of. Upper Township. If we're going to do it, we should probably look at our entrances, and, and they're probably the two most viable ones. There's one in Chivo on Red Nine, too. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> it's going over a little bridge there, my friend. Um, 
but, you know, I mean, it's, it's a place to start and, and consider, you know, what you've uh, brought before us, so, you know, as an opportunity. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Jack Griffin uh, from North Shore Road, Marmore. I wasn't planning on speaking this evening. I want to thank uh, Committeeman Coggins for your congratulations towards me for the Upper Township Business Association, the President. Thank you. Um, but because of what Wanda said, I wasn't sure that those meetings for Route 50 that they had already started. I knew that uh, you know, being on the planning board, and we had talked about different things. But with that in mind, even before I became president now, there, was, uh, there were a few of the businesses that are in our area there, the Seaville Shopping Center, uh, 50, uh, you know, the area that kind of needs some loving care. Well, a lot of loving care. <laughs> And uh, with the consideration that I know people have GPSs and that we can all go different places and get there all different ways, but with the detour that does happen and with the inconvenience that happens with that detour, the concern of the business association and the people that are there and have been surviving, that apparently this has happened once before where people were detoured and it took a toll on their business. And so with the consideration, I'm not sure which one of you are part of that at, at, at any of those meetings, but I would strongly like try to suggest that we think about the businesses because the ones that are there have survived. And uh, there are people of the township that really are looking for it to continue and to grow. So with that in mind, um, I, like I said, I wasn't sure that those meetings had started already and I would like to go myself if I can make the meetings. But if we can have that consideration uh, above everything else, because uh, I don't know how you'll get to where you have to get, you know, uh, once they leave Route 50, but the concern is that once they learn how to get there, they'll continue to go that way to miss the traffic in the busy season. And so, therefore, they have a, a huge consideration. I, if I owned a business right there, I'd be very concerned. So, I think I think the way the plan is, the majority of the businesses will still be able to be um, accessed. Um, it, you know, it, it's kind of a, a catch-22. Um, we certainly can't walk away from addressing a bridge that is really old and really needs to be repaired, replaced. Um, and so. You know, some of those inconveniences we're all going to face. You know, it's not only the, the, the business owners, it's the property owners that are living on 50, they're going to certainly be inconvenienced as well. Um, so I, I do think that the state, at least from the meeting that I attended that we had here, the original meeting, um, they're, they're, they're very cognizant of that. Um, they're certainly willing to do uh, whatever they can um, to address not only you know, the, the detour issues, but also the safety issues from the residents that are living along Tyler Road that are also going to be inconvenienced um, because of, of access routes, uh, access down Route 50 where the bridge is being replaced. The whole lane is going to be kept open. That's why I wanted to know. Uh, no, they're, they're, I don't know that that's what they had proposed, but I'm not sure that's 100% set in stone. I don't know that they confirmed that. That was a, another alternative that was brought up for consideration, but they said it depends on the existing structure as once they start working with it, is right. if it's possible. We had understood that too on the planning board when they presented, you know, exactly. they were talking about it. The possibility can be that it's open to one lane, but right. more but, likely maybe not because of the, the you know. Right. The, I mean, the, the explanation that they gave that evening was that although that could be an alternative, that they, could, they couldn't commit to that because they don't know what the existing structure looks like underneath. And they also said the, the problem is is it, it would be two sides. You do one side and then you repair it, and then you, know, you bring it over to the other side. And um, you know, they're just not sure that the structure is able to, to, to hold that type of capacity. Have they spoken at the previous meeting about a time frame, if it, was the wor if it were the worst case scenario, what it might be in terms of Years or um, I think it was more like potentially over two summer periods, so close to two years, more like 18 months. So, I mean, you know, normally some of these things have an override 
on time. So I, I think we were pretty much considering two months, two years, um, which is a long time, obviously. But you know, for the amount of time that that the the bridge, oh, you know, in Tucaho to, to complete, um, you know. We're just, I don't know that, you know, you, you don't really have any time, total time commitment at this point. Right. Well, I appreciate you thinking about it. Maybe during that two years we can also... I, I do think that what you say makes sense for signage because, or, or, you know, at least directing people that things are open. Um, right. Because I also think that in itself is a safety measure because people won't be looking and stopping suddenly and that kind of thing. Um, but our focus during that first meeting was certainly to address the safety of those that are living along Tyler Road that could be really inconvenienced if the traffic is moving down there as a detour. Uh, that's gonna, Tyler Road is going to be severely impacted. And it's just not that kind of road. First of all, unfortunately, the road has had its fair share of accidents to begin with, with normal, very slow moving traffic. You know, I mean, there's things that cause the, the accidents, but. You know, it, it's a great concern that that's really the only way that we can detour people. But, you know, 50 runs along, you know, marshlands on either side, and that's really the only alternative that they have at this point. Well, I appreciate the time. Uh, perhaps simultaneously we can work on that full interchange at exit 20 and come this way from it and that way, and then when it's all done no in two years. Hello! <laughs> uh, Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Anyone else would like to address the township committee? Now is the time to do so. Okay, it appears that um, the public has uh, exhausted those that want to come forward uh, to speak. So um, I'll close the public comment portion and entertain a motion to go into executive session. I hereby move that a resolution be incorporated into the minutes authorizing the Township Committee to enter into an executive session for the following matters pursuant to the Open Public <coughs> Meetings Act. Contract negotiation with Cape Bay County Council on alcoholism and drug abuse. Litigation, Holt versus Upper Township Zoning Board of Adjustment. Potential litigation for Whipper Will Campgrounds and personnel. I also include in my motion the estimated time and circumstances under which the discussion in closed session can be disclosed to the public as follows. It is anticipated that the matters discussed in closed session may be disclosed to the public upon the determination of the Township Committee that the public interest will no longer be served by such confidentiality. With respect to employment and personnel matters, such discussions will be made public if more formal action is taken or when the individuals involved consent that it can be made public. With respect to contract negotiations, such matters will be made public when negotiations have ceased and there is no longer a reason for confidentiality. With respect to litigation matters, such discussions will be made public when litigation is complete and the applicable appeal period has expired. Second. Let's call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. yes. Thank you all for attending this evening. Uh, please drive safely home and have a great week.